Good afternoon. Welcome to the AgriBuilder webinar series. My name is Paul Jones. I'm the manager of the National AgriBuilder Project, which is housed at Purdue University. Today's topic for our webinar is gardening with effective arthritis management. And we have two presenters today. Amber Wolf is the AgriBuilder coordinator with the Arthritis Foundation Heartland region, which is headquartered in Indianapolis. Steve Swain is the assistive technology specialist for the National AgriBuilder Project and also the Rural Rehabilitation Specialist for the Indiana AgriBuilder Project. Okay, need to bring up another. Presentation. Okay. Before we get started with the actual content today, I have a few basic instructions. Uh, you will need speakers, of course, to hear the presentation as we do not have a phone connection for this particular webinar. You can check your uh, connection speed if you want to do that up in the top left hand corner of the uh, menu at the top with the, the Manage My. Uh, settings menu. Dial-up is not recommended for this webinar and is probably not even usable. <clears throat> we will um, entertain questions about the presentation. After the presentation is over, we'll have a question and answer period. But at any time during the presentation, you may go ahead and type your questions in the chat window and hit return. It's a little bubble icon there. Or also during the question and answer period, if you do have a web camera and or microphone, you can raise your hand using the raise hand icon at the top of your screen and indicate that you have a question. And we will activate your microphone so you can ask that question verbally. At the end uh, of the presentation, we'll also have four quick survey questions. We'd appreciate you sticking around and filling those out online as we're uh, concluding the webinar. We will also be recording, or yes, recording the webinar and also archiving it on the uh, the uh, web link listed on your screen. In fact, on that um, link already, there are the uh, PowerPoint presentation and a couple of uh, resource handouts. So feel free to click that um, while we're still on this slide. You may do that and open that window uh, for future reference. If you have any problems during the uh, webinar with technical issues, please try to use the uh, <clears throat> chat window first. If you cannot use the chat window, then please uh, send an email to agribility at agribility.org. Again, you can click on that link now if you'd like to open an email, just in case you need that. Um, I also know that um, we have several um, sites that have multiple participants. We'd also appreciate uh, if you do have more than one person uh, viewing a webinar <clears throat> at your particular site, if you could let us know in the chat window how many people are viewing the webinar from your site, that would be helpful for us in terms of recording our attendance. A few um, issues with webinars that we've had in the past. At times, there have been uh, disconnects with our presenters. And if that's the case, just hang on. We will try to reconnect as quickly as possible. If you happen to get disconnected, uh, our best advice is to go ahead and just log back in uh, to the same site that you logged into. We are going to try uh, sharing some videos at the end. We'll wait till after the actual presentation is over, and we will um, share those from our YouTube site. So um, if you could give us feedback on that, we'd also appreciate that. Uh, we know it's not going to be uh, it's quite as smooth a, a presentation as uh, <clears throat> normally you would see on YouTube, but we'll try it. And uh, we'll also, we also have the YouTube link on the, uh, the archived webinar site, which we had up uh, previously, if you'd like to go to that directly. For those that are not familiar with AgriBility, it is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the focus is on assisting farmers and ranchers with disabilities. Every AgriBility project is a partnership between a land-grant university in a particular state and at least one disability services organization. Currently, there are 23 AgriBility projects around the country, and they cover 25 states. 
The National Agribility Project is led again by Purdue's Breaking New Ground Resource Center. And one of our partners on both the National Agribility Project and the Indiana Agribility Project is the Heartland found or the, excuse me, the Arthritis Foundation Heartland Region. Again, that's uh, Amber Wolf's home organization. If you're interested in more information about agribility, please feel free to visit www.agribility.org. <clears throat> now I'm going to turn things over to Amber, and uh, she will begin the presentation, and then uh, Steve Swain will join us uh, in just a little while. Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We're very excited to have you here for this topic. We feel it's a very important topic for Agribility and for the Arthritis Foundation because of the popularity of gardening as a hobby across the United States and because of the prevalence of arthritis as one of the number one disabilities in the United States as well. So we hope that you get quite a bit out of our webinar today, and we hope that we're able to answer any of your questions and help you become better, more effective gardeners and help you to manage any arthritis pain you might be having or prevent any future pain as well. So let's get started. A little bit about arthritis, just to make sure we're all up to speed. The true definition of arthritis refers to an inflammation of a joint, and that can be any joint in the body. Uh, it refer refers to over 100 forms of different rheumatic or autoimmune diseases that are characterized by problems in and around the joints. So that also includes the muscles and the tendons and ligaments and bones surrounding all of the joints in the body themselves. The inflammation and pain that occurs with the degeneration of many forms of arthritis um, occurs in the connective tissue, and it can be very painful. Uh, most of the forms are chronic and unfortunately have no cure. So what we strive to do is help you to maintain um, an easy level of accommodation and maintain and manage your pain after a form or a diagnosis of arthritis has occurred. It can be effectively treated with good self-education and management, but also with awareness and medical support. We do not suggest that any of you try to manage your arthritis on your own without also seeking help from your medical professional. A few stats and statistics about arthritis. Currently, there are nearly 50 million people in the United States that have some form of doctor-diagnosed arthritis. And again, doctor-diagnosed is a key term there. Many people tend to think they understand arthritis and, and understand the issues, but knowing what form you're dealing with and knowing how to properly treat that is extremely important. By the year 2030, there is an estimation that 67 million Americans and adults in America will have some form of arthritis, which is a projected increase of 25% of the total population. So that's a pretty significant number, and that's why we feel that this is an important topic to be addressing as well. Arthritis is the most common cause of disability in the United States, of limiting nearly 21 million Americans in their jobs. Now, whether gardening falls under that category as a job or a career for you, or as a hobby, it's still a very limiting disease, limiting disease. More than half of the individuals in the United States that have arthritis are younger than 65 years of age. So we also tend to believe that we need to be working with all generations of farmers and agriculturalists and gardeners as well to make sure that we're both preventing and managing arthritis pain. So gardening with arthritis, this is a very popular topic. We get a lot of questions and referrals and uh, request for information on gardening with arthritis and we think that this will be a very good webinar for you to be able to share with your communities as well after we're finished. Gardening can be an excellent form of treatment for arthritis. However, it can also hurt if your ability level isn't where you think it should be or if you try to overdo things in the garden, which some people tend to do. Some of the benefits of gardening include joint flexibility and range of motion increasing um, after a form or after a diagnosis of arthritis, and lessen stress levels. Everyone who gardens tends to tell me that they enjoy it, and it's a, a great form of exercise for them. But at the same time, once they reach that threshold of knowing when to stop, some people don't stop when they should, and they continue to garden, which then becomes a problem with arthritis pain. The first thing that we would suggest you do is to define your role. Is your garden your hobby, or is it a form of income? Is this something that you enjoy doing for an hour in the evenings after work, or do you only get a chance to garden for five or six hours on the weekend, or are you running a commercial greenhouse? Are you running a roadside stand, and is this something that you have to maintain to be able to provide your own form of income as well? So you need to determine, is this a chore, or is this truly just a hobby that you enjoy doing um, after the rest of your chores are already completed? 
And then you also have to ask yourself, has arthritis pain ever taken away that joy of your hobby gardening? Or has it taken away from the productivity of your operation? And if it has, then it's time to look at some modifications and accommodations in your garden so you can continue to be successful. Understanding your limits is very important. Knowing that arthritis pain can take away the joy of gardening because of the severe back and hip and knee pain that can be incurred, or hand and wrist and shoulder pain as well, depending on if you're carrying heavy loads. There's a lot of bending and kneeling and, and twisting involved in gardening, not to mention the repetitive motions involved with pruning and weeding and carrying heavy things like water buckets and things. So if those are issues, then you need to understand what your physical body limits are. You need to know where to stop so you don't overdo it. Arthritis is just as much mental as physical, and there are times when you can let yourself know that it is okay to be active. Um, Staying in a form, uh, an inactive state is not as good for arthritis as staying, as staying healthy and staying in a constant form of movement. Being able to keep your joints limber is very important. Arthritis pain can make gardening seem like a tougher task than it needs to be. And sometimes when you look at a task that you know you have to complete, if you don't feel like your body can accommodate you, then you need to stop and you need to find another way to either accomplish that task or move on to something else. Rushing yourself can also irritate arthritic joints. There are several times when you need to stop and make yourself take frequent breaks or change positions because you've been in the same position for too long. Rushing yourself through uh, the job that you're trying to accomplish is going to uh, irritate your joints as well. The benefits of gardening can be great. It can be a very stress relieving exercise and it can be very good physical exercise. Remember, movement is medicine. Staying in a, in a state of movement is good for arthritis. However, excessive movement or high impact exercise aren't as good for arthritis as just low impact exercise and very stress free limited movements. The most important tool in a garden is the body. And if you ask any gardener what they use the most, some of them will think of their rake or their edger or their, their pruning shears. But if you really start to think about it, the body is the tool that you're using the most because you have to use it to operate those tools. So you need to take care of your body like you would the rest of the tools in your storage shed. With proper body mechanics and well-designed gardening tools and frequent rest breaks, you can remain healthy, a healthy gardener despite your arthritis pain, but you still need to continue to understand your own personal levels. Some tips and tricks and things that we're going to talk about today, and you'll notice that Steve will talk about some of these as well. Some things that you need to consider are pacing yourself. Sometimes it's very easy to get home from work and say, I know I have to get through these four rows of plants, or I know I need to transplant these six container gardens. And sometimes pacing yourself is a better option than giving yourself a, a checklist or a to-do list. It's not always going to be possible to get through everything you think you need to do because your body isn't going to allow for that. Take time to warm up your joints first, just like you would if you were going to participate in a sport or go to the gym. Taking time to, uh, to stretch and prepare your body and prepare your joints is going to be very beneficial. And you'll see a, we have a resource that is available online that gives you a set of stretches, a set of gardening stretches that are very beneficial for that. Using the proper tools is imperative. There are times when grabbing the closest tool is the easiest or finding something that will certainly get the job done, but maybe not in the proper way. And those are things that are going to end up hurting your joints because you're putting the wrong type of pressure and force on them. So make sure you're using the proper tools for your jobs. And wearing gloves. Uh, some people will argue against wearing gloves when they're gardening because they really enjoy the feel of the warm soil on their hands, and I understand that completely. However, if you are going to be using heavy tools or gripping tools that don't have a padded handle on them, wearing gardening gloves will protect the joints in your hands as well. And some of the other things you'll see Steve do in the videos later or talk about in his um, accommodations and tools are things like modifying your gardening styles, um, using a stool or a kneeling pad, and we'll talk about all of those things as well. Preparing your body. Taking the time to do some simple, simple stretches before, during, and after gardening is important. Several people think that, well, if I stretch before I go exercise, then I'm done and I can complete my jobs and, and go back in the house for the evening. But it's very important that you take time to, to stretch and let your body return to its normal position after you've finished your gardening chores as well. And you need to listen to your body. Everyone's threshold is different. So if you start to feel pain, stop the current work that you're doing and move on to something else. If it's severe pain, stop what you're doing completely and take the time to rest 
come back to the garden the next day, even if you think you have to get it done because it's going to rain or because maybe you have a pest in your garden, your own body health is more important. And there are times when you need to listen to your body and stop what you're doing to accommodate that. You can also embrace the use of ergonomic, enabling, or adapted tools to make your gardening easier. But again, some of these tools are not universal. So it's very important that you decide what type of tool do you need for the job you're completing and what type of tool do you need for your own body as well. And you can see on this slide, this is uh, an example of some of the stretches that we have provided for you in the archives. Um, it's a set of simple stretches that we recommend be done four minutes before your gardening exercises, four minutes during, and four minutes after. And we certainly don't tell you that you have to do all of these stretches in a certain order, but you can know what you're going to be working on that evening in the garden. If you know you're going to be weeding, or if you know you're going to be working with small seeds and, and transplanting small um, young juvenile plants, Maybe doing the stretches that work more with your hands and your fingers and your elbows. But if you know you might be working with uh, putting beans and in, in putting up trellises for some of your plants, maybe you need to do the stretches that are going to work with your lower back and your shoulders. So determining what you're going to be doing that evening or that day is important. And then determining which joints in your body do you think you're going to be utilizing the most so you can properly stretch those and warm those joints up. And again, that resource is available in the archives, and I think that's been posted. Protecting your posture is extremely important. Poor posture can lead to severe pain, fatigue, and strains on the body and the joints and the muscles. There are several ways you can do that. Knowing that, that your body is a certain height compared to someone else's is going to be easier to work with certain plants. Um, for some people, it's very difficult to get down on the ground and work with low plants, but maybe it's easier to work with things that are higher up. For some people, it's not as easy to bend over and work without the use of a garden cart or a kneeling cart. And you'll see in one of the videos at the end of the session today that we show some of the, the different forms that you can use for these gardening carts. However, some of them actually can perpetuate worse posture. Um, if you are looking at buying a kneeling cart or a rolling garden cart or even a stool or a bucket, making sure that it's at the proper height so your knees are bent correctly and so you're not putting extra stress on your lower back um, where most of your, your movement is going to occur. Your upper back has very limited motion, and your lower back is what allows you to flex forward and backwards. However, your lower back should not be a form of twisting. It, you should not be able to twist from left to right with your lower back. That's where your hips need to be used. So finding a cart that allows you to have that good flexibility and that good motion is very important. Additional stress on the back and hips and legs usually occurs when you see people using some of the um, self-propelled or rear-propelled tillers and, and garden tillers. And again, we have another video of that at the end of the session today that shows Steve working with a garden tiller and the vibrations that are occurring on his body, the stress that he's having to put on his lower back and his legs as he works that tiller through the soil. So please make sure you stick around to look at some of those videos if you have a chance. Again, here are some more pictures of the different types of stools and seats that you can use in your garden. When you are using a garden cart or a stool, whichever you determine is best for you, make sure you try to avoid staying in one position for too long. Avoid those repetitive tasks that you're going to be doing for long periods of time. For example, if you're thinning out a set of carrots or radishes in your garden and you have two to three rows of them, work on one row at a time. Take a break, move on to something else, and then come to the next row. Don't get it set in your mind that you have to complete all of those plants at one time because that repetition and staying in that position for too long is what's ultimately going to cause more joint pain. Using the strongest and the largest joints and muscles for the job is key. If you know you have to carry bags of potting soil, carry them up closer to your body. Don't carry them out at the ends of your arms or don't try to drag them from one place to the other. If you can't carry them with your joints, then find a way to move them, maybe with a two-wheel dolly or a cart, or even putting them on, on an old chair on wheels and getting them to where you need them to be. But if you do have to carry things, use that largest joint possible. You know, lift with your legs, not with your back. Your legs are a stronger joint and a stronger muscle than your back. Avoid twisting at those odd angles to help protect your hip joints again, as we discussed. And, and truly try to figure out what angle do you need to be working at in the garden. Make sure that you're working on the just one row at a time and not switching from one side to the other. And make sure that you know exactly where you need to be at all times so you're not overextending your joints. 
Supporting your joints is another option. If you already know that you have low back pain or if you know that you have elbow or wrist pain, there are several splints and supports out there on the market that are easy to use. However, make sure you consult with your physician first before you determine what type of splints or supports might you need. And maybe even ask them, you know, are there other things on the market that, that you don't know about, something that you can't easily get over the counter that might really help you if you have joint pain in certain areas. Try to keep that excessive twisting and reaching to a minimum. Use long-handled tools or carts to bring all of your tools with you so you're avoiding multiple trips back and forth to your storage area. Proper footwear is just as crucial as gloves. Uh, making sure that you have footwear that has good traction with a solid sole and good ankle support is very important. It's very easy to go out in the summertime in a pair of sandals just to check on your garden, but really that doesn't give you the support or the movement that you need um, that you're going to be walking on uneven ground or walking in, in uneven soil or even on slippery surfaces. So make sure you find a good pair of gardening shoes or a good pair of work boots to help you along. Be aware of carrying heavy loads. Anyone who's carried a five gallon bucket full of water knows that it's not very easy to maneuver that bucket without spilling it or without putting excess strain on your joints. Try to use your, your larger joints instead of your wrist as the main joint. Your wrist is not as strong as it should be when carrying those loads. Maybe wear braces again on your wrist to support that repetitive movements. Things like hand pruning and weeding or dropping seeds in a garden if you don't, um, or even in, in a tray. If you're working in a greenhouse and you're starting plants from seeds, that's a very repetitive motion, dropping seeds in and out of your rows. And if you can take the time to stretch your fingers and flex your fingers, those types of repetitive movements won't be as painful. And again, we've talked about wearing gloves to support your wrists and support your finger joints. Um, again, some people don't like to wear gloves because they like the warmth of the soil, and that's fine. But really think about using those gloves if you are going to be using long-handled or short-handled tools that don't have a padded handle for you. Being aware of the weather is extremely important, and most people are aware of that peak hour or the peak day, uh, daylight hours between usually 10 and 2 o'clock that tend to be extremely hot and bright. And we tell people to stay out of the sun during those hours when they're swimming or enjoying other recreational activities, and gardening is the same way. Many of us tend to think, however, of those hours as being bad for our plants. We don't always think about them as being bad for our bodies as well. So try to work at both the best time for your garden, but also the best time for you. If you move better in the mornings and your joints are more limber in the mornings, then try to get most of your work done before the heat hits. If you need to work in the evenings after you've been up and around and, and you need that stress relief, then that's the same. Find the best time for you to be able to work. Some other things that you can think about with weather exposure is to make sure that you're wearing the appropriate clothing and shoes. Again, you know, it, most people tend to think, well, it's nice and it's warm out. I'm going to go out and maybe wear some sandals and shorts, but those aren't appropriate gardening clothes. Make sure you're wearing long pants, maybe even long sleeves to protect yourself from the sun exposure without allowing yourself to get overheated. Other things you can do is to drink plenty of water to help lubricate your joints. Avoid caffeinated drinks. Those are not good for arthritis pain and for your joints as well. And try to make sure that you're listening to your body, even in the heat and the sunlight of the day. It will let you know if it's time for you to stop what you're doing. So a few low maintenance reminders before we move on to Steve, who's going to talk about um, some of the actual accommodations and modifications to your gardening style and some of the tools. Other things you can think about in the very beginning. When you're planning your garden, consider all of your options for your location. Some of you have had a garden in the same location for years, and this might not be very easy to change, but some of you might be considering putting some gardens in or getting started. Make sure you're near a water source and, and near your tool storage so you're not having to make several trips up to your water source or to get different tools. If you do have to put it in a location that's far away, find a way maybe to bring those things to you. Is there a temporary tool storage that you can put near your garden? Could you do a, a water barrel or a rainwater collection near your garden so you're not having to carry water back and forth as well? And also, do you have access from all sides? Mobility is a very important issue with gardens, and Steve's going to talk to you about pathways and, and slope and things like that. But sometimes getting in and out of a garden just in one spot is not very accommodating because you're having to backtrack and, and move more than you should. Consider different options for weed control. Uh, weeds are the bane of our existence as gardeners, and we know that sometimes you just have to go out there and do that, but it's going to be painful once you get done. Maybe start out thinking about things before you get your garden going for the year, using excess mulch or black plastic to control your weeds. 
chemicals are another option, but sometimes um, you know, we have a lot of gardeners who are very organic, who don't like to use different chemicals. But there are several options out there to help you control weeds, besides just physically removing the weeds themselves. You can also consider your options for plant choices. Sometimes it might be easier to use young juvenile plants that you get from a local greenhouse or a garden store rather than starting all of your plants from seeds. If you have severe arthritis pain in your hands, this might be a better option because you're avoiding that repetitive seeding motion um, and that transplanting motion that are going to use your finger joints a little bit more excessively than you should. Also consider the types of plants based on their maintenance and their requirements for water and their space and their growing mediums. If you can find plants that are very easy um, to grow in multiple mediums, they're very hardy, they don't require a lot of maintenance, those will require you to do less physical work in your garden or in hanging baskets or in, in small containers on your porches. And also consider those watering options, like we talked about, um, possibly a rainwater collection. If your garden is far away from a water source, a rain barrel is a great way to collect good, healthy water for your garden. Other options you could consider besides hand watering would be using soaker hoses or sprinkler systems. So there are a lot of different options that you can utilize to make gardening easier on yourself. And it really just comes down to sitting down and making a list of the different difficulties you're having in your garden and all of the different options that we have for helping you to fix those. So with that, we are going to move into some gardening style modifications. I am not a technical person. Uh, you will find that out. But I, what we want to talk about now is uh, some of the modifications that we want to look at. So we're going to look at container gardens, raised beds, trellises. So let's move on to that. Uh, when we talk about container gardening, uh, we start with uh, hanging baskets. As you see there on the left, what we're doing is raising the uh, garden up to our level. That way we can uh, work on without getting down on ground level. Uh, the, on the right-hand side, you see a hanging basket that is actually on a, uh, you can actually pull down, take care of it, move it back up into place. And then we get into some of the decorative pots and window boxes. Uh, again, you can put these on your level so that uh, you don't have to move down. I might say that on, on uh, pots like you see there on the right, uh, set them up on your level. There are also... Uh, rollers that, that you can set those on to move them around. We get into some of the, the smaller plants, uh, some of the herbs. Uh, you can get into some uh, small containers on your windowsill uh, quite easily. And then we get into uh, the garden. Uh, here we have some raised beds. But most of what we're looking at is uh, trellises. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing that. Uh, you see there on the left, we're actually using some uh, string or twine, uh, probably for uh, beans to grow on. On the right, uh, they build a wooden trellis. Uh, if you want to get a little bit uh, cheap, as I tend to be, uh, find some fencing or some concrete uh, reinforcing fence or some livestock panels to use as trellises. Some of those you probably find around for free. Mobility, and this is one of the areas that we probably have most difficulty with because uh, you want a pathway that you can get to the garden, 
uh, you know, make sure that it's uh, wide enough, uh, solid footing. If we're looking for some kind of uh, pathway, uh, if you don't want to use concrete, you could use some uh, agricultural lime. It'll pack down like concrete. And usually you want those uh, pass uh, at least three foot wide. Uh, and if you're using some wider carts, then you'd want them wider. Uh, most of the time, three to four feet will take care of it. Uh, well-drained, uh, a well-drained garden it makes it a lot easier to work, makes it a lot easier uh, to go out when you need to, uh, but you don't want to fight the mud either. In these pictures, you see some uh, examples on the left there where uh, they've tried to to put about everything they could into a very small area to where it's difficult to move around. And if you're looking at a stool or scoot to sit on, it's very difficult. On the right-hand side, uh, this is better. Uh, you've got some clear paths there. Uh, one thing I'd encourage you to look at is uh, how wide is it? Is it wide enough for you to uh, move through and uh, use your devices that you need to? Again, another way of uh, raising uh, your garden is uh, raised ground beds. Uh, some of that is on the right. Uh, Again, bringing those up, uh, if you're going to work from uh, a chair or maybe uh, you've gotten a place where you're using a wheelchair, you want those beds to be at least 18 inches off the ground. And if you can only access the bed from one side, uh, you only want it a couple of feet wide because that's as far as you can reach. If you can access it from both sides, then you're looking at four feet wide. Again, the, the picture on the right is uh, you've got some narrow pathways there. So take a look at that. Uh, we're going to look a little bit more. we got the straw, straw beds there. And uh, this is a easy way to uh, raise uh, your bed, you don't have to work the soil. Uh, you get some uh, grass or straw, uh, preferably uh, where it's started to decompose. Uh, if not, there's a, a process to uh, get that process started. But uh, you can put some ammonium nitrate in it and water it, and then if you're going to uh, plant uh, cucumbers or tomatoes or peppers, uh, plant right into the uh, bale. If you're going to plant some uh, seeds, uh, ground cover, radishes, and so forth, uh, they recommend that you put about four inches of soil on top of the bale. That way, they've got a medium to uh, start growth. Another way of raising the beds uh, is actually uh, getting them up clear off the ground. Uh, the right hand side on the top, uh, you're looking at some very much raised beds. Uh, you want the space under those to be at least 29 inches. And I'm thinking again of uh, wheelchairs. And the space needs to be uh, at least 36 inches wide so there's room. Uh, like a the gentleman there in the bottom picture uh, is able to move in and work around. Again, that two foot reach is the, as far as you want to go. Uh, the terracing on the left, 
for some of us that can be difficult, but is it is a way of, of raising that bed up and uh, being able to work on it. We're going to move on to the tools, uh, long handles, uh, cushion handles, uh, reaching, uh, some of the carts. But first, we want to talk a little bit about ergonomics. And we could get real technical on this, but we will make it simple uh, because we want to protect those joints uh, from strain and injury. And uh, because that's what's going to uh, bring on some of that arthritis. Now, there are some tools that uh, are made specifically for women uh, with smaller grip, but uh, all of us are, are different and need to check the tools out to make it better. But you get uh, neutral joint pos uh, positions. You're going to minimize stress, uh, get a little more strength into it. Uh, and make sure that you got the handles appropriate size. Uh, you don't want a lot of vibration. Uh, you'll see that when I'm running the rototiller later. Uh, sometimes it can beat you to death. Uh, you want to have thumb rest in the proper diameter. Uh, that di diameter can be uh, increased. Uh, sometimes using uh, pipe insulation. Uh, again, that's a simple way of doing it. And then some spring loader power assisted tools will increase some of your leverage. Again, we've, we look at uh, fitting uh, the tool to you. Uh, and the rule of thumb is if you grip it and touch the thumb to your fingers, and if it is, if you go past that, then you need to make the handle bigger. A uh, pistol grip is much better than a, a straight handle. Again, you're not going to put all the uh, force and strain on that wrist. Long handle tools. Uh, two handles are better than one. Uh, you see in the picture uh, an extra handle makes it a lot better, a lot easier to take the strain off your back. Uh, again, we'll show some videos on that. Uh, you want the, the tools lighter weight, uh, large the handle with, uh, with foam. Uh, make sure you got them, uh, the hole or is sharpened so it re reduces the resistance. Uh, it just makes it easier. Some modified tools. Uh, there are some tools that you can change the length of the handle. And uh, depending on whether you're sitting or standing, uh, you can vary that length. Again, taking some of the strain off your back as you do it. Uh, stabilizing your wrist. They're on the left. And you've got a, a pistol grip handle, and then you've got the cuff over the forearm. That that cuff takes some of the stress off the off your uh, wrist and hand. Uh, power hand tools. Uh, you got the bulb planter, the auger on the cordless drill. Uh, very good. I love I love mine makes it a lot easier. Uh, I would caution you uh, have a good grip on it because if the auger catches, uh, it's going to jerk your wrist and it might hurt more then than what it did before. Uh, there are some uh, handles that you can use to carry uh, some of your bags. Uh, you see a picture of it there. Uh, I would caution you uh, when you're carrying that. Uh, if you've got to do more than one, uh, it helps to balance out because uh, it'll strain one side if you just carry it on one side. 
we get into some of the, the wheeled carts, a way of getting your tools to the garden. Uh, the picture on the left uh, is a cart that, if you've got a good walkway, uh, would work very well. Uh, there are some others that uh, might work better going through grass. Uh, I have one that is a luggage carrier that I've put a five-gallon bucket on with a bungee cord. Uh, with it having a, the bigger tires makes it a lot easier. Uh, your shovel step on the right uh, makes it easier uh, to get your foot and get the pressure on the shovel. Uh, and it, it doesn't crease in your foot either. Uh, your sprayer down at the bottom, uh, most of them have a lock on them so that you can set the, the flow rate and, and make it easier so you don't have to hold it all the time. And then just some other simple carriers. Uh, garden apron will, uh, you can have all the tools there that you need. And then the pot lifter, uh, hopefully you don't have to move a pot that size very often, but uh, it can be moved by a couple people. So we've looked at arthritis, we've looked at modifications, and we go, okay, what if these modifications aren't an option? Maybe it's price, location, materials, time. What if other tasks are difficult, but not enough to change the entire gardening style, like edging or weed eating, spreading mulch, or dividing perennials? These are some of the questions that we were asked by individuals when they signed up. Uh, I would encourage you to talk to your uh, extension educator or your agribility professional in your state. Uh, so they can uh, give you more one-on-one -on -one advice. Uh, next two questions about uh, do chemicals have an effect on arthritis? We're talking pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, or fertilizers. And what about products of the garden? Do some foods have a positive or negative effect on arthritis pain? Uh, nightshade vegetables? I will be honest with you, I do not know. Uh, and we encourage you to talk to your uh, physician, primary care provider, or maybe even talk to your rheumatologist uh, to learn uh, all of these. And then the, your primary care provider physician to uh, looking at allergies and diets and exercise, because this, this can all be different for uh, different people. Some resources, uh, National Arthritis Foundation, uh, you have the web address there, arthritis.org. They have uh, resources on there. Uh, National Agribility Project, agribility.org. And I would especially uh, direct you to the Toolbox Assistive Technology Database. Uh, we have on there, uh, tools and modifications for the home garden, as well as uh, getting into production of produce. Uh, and then Arthritis and Agriculture webpage, uh, there's uh, resources on there, arthritis-ag.org. Uh, there's uh, brochures, there's a therapeutic gardening article, and uh, there's a don't let the dirt hurt stretching exercise sheet. Some other resources, uh, Arthritis Today magazine has tips for reducing pain while gardening. Uh, Gardens for Everybody uh, is uh, from the Missouri, Missouri Agribility Project. And then Endless Gardening in the Arkansas Agribility Project. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Paul. And uh, 
We'll also show some video. Thank you, Steve and Amber, for the presentation. And uh, we will uh, also, after we finish with our question and answer period, <clears throat> we will have a slide up that shows all those resources uh, on one slide so that you can uh, take a look at those after we're finished. Right now, we would like to uh, begin the question and answer period by asking you some questions. And uh, what we'll do is have this uh, online polling tool, and I will open a poll online and then um, <clears throat> ask you to respond to these uh, four quick questions. The first one asks your professional affiliation, um, whether you are uh, part of an organization, or if you're a master gardener, or if you're uh, just a consumer that's not necessarily affiliated with affiliated with any particular organization. <clears throat> if you are involved with AgriBility in one way or another, we appreciate you uh, marking the first response. And uh, <clears throat> others can choose the appropriate ones. I'll give you a couple more seconds to, to uh, fill those out, and then I'll share the results with the entire viewing audience. Okay, you can see uh, we have quite a few master gardeners here today and a variety of others from different organizations. Thank you for your response on that. The next question asks about the information that was shared today. Um, <clears throat> does the information, or was the information that was shared during the presentation, was it uh, valuable and did it meet your expectations? So if we could take a few uh, minutes, a few seconds to respond to that, we'd appreciate your input and we'll share the results with you in just a little while. Okay, thank you for your input on that. It looks like most people gained some information from what was shared. The next question asks about the technology today. I know some people did have some uh, technical glitches, which we have come to expect with these webinars. But in general, if you could tell us if um, the technology that was used today was effective for you and usable. Appreciate your input. Okay. Looks like most people got along all right with that, so we appreciate your input. And our final question, based on today's session, would you uh, attend another session in this series? So if you could let us know on that, we'd appreciate it. I will mention um, we do have another webinar coming up in June, and it is in uh, concerning lighting for safety and health in agricultural settings. You can uh, go to the agribility.org website and look on the online training link, and it will give you information on how to register for that. <clears throat> June 13th, Thursday, June 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll share the... Uh, poll responses there. Appreciate your input on that. If you have questions, again, uh, please fill in the chat window. And uh, I will go ahead and turn things over back over to Steve and Amber for the questions. Um, after they are finished, we will try to uh, show you some of the videos that we've put up on the YouTube channel that uh, demonstrate some of the tools that Steve was talking about. So I will turn things back over to Steve and Amber, 
and we will address any questions that you have provided. Again, if you have a, a webcam or a microphone and you would like to answer, or excuse me, ask a question verbally, use the raise hand icon at the top of the screen and we will enable your microphone and allow you to answer and ask that question verbally. Okay, uh, we have some questions here. And uh, the first one, are any common garden chemicals detrimental to arthritis? Uh, I, c I don't know. That is out of my area of expertise. Uh, I would I would recommend that you talk to your doctor, um, and that let him he knows more what they can affect. Uh, where can we get the modified tools? Uh, I would refer you to uh, the aggravated website and the uh, toolbox assistive technology database. Uh, in there. Uh, we have the tools, and on the on each page is a is all the contact information uh, for that product. It'll have the company name, address, phone number, website, uh, and uh, you know an approximate cost. Uh, we've We've found uh, several of these uh, tools, uh, Lowe's, Menards, uh, Garden Centers, uh, Home Depot. Uh, not, very few of them uh, are specialized, are special order products. Uh, some of them Lee Valley, but uh, a lot of what I've got that I use uh, are right off the shelf. Do you have some mail order sources for ergonomic tools? Uh, Lee Valley uh, is one. Uh, again, looking at, at some of your garden supply. Uh, Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. Uh, part of it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, when we do the modifications to, for some of the hoes and shovels, uh, those can be made ergonomic uh, with just a, adding a handle, uh, like we saw in the one picture. Uh, and I've I've gotten them off the shelf, uh, Ace Hardware, uh, Real King, uh, and so forth. And we've we've got one uh, a comment here: uh, Garden Supply Catalogs uh, has some of that also. Uh, Gardenscape Tools is another place, uh, especially the ones with the, with a pistol grip and the, and the cuff. So, uh, okay, we've got a would would like to see how to properly rake leaves. Um, the first thing I would I would do, and we're we don't have a demonstration of that, but I would encourage you to get an extra handle uh, that can be added to the handle of the rake and uh, make it easier that way. We're gonna, we'll have a video. And uh, uh, Another question, I'd like to learn proper way for shoveling compost. Again, uh, an extra handle uh, will, will help you do that. Uh, the, that way you're not bending your back and putting a lot of pressure on it. And we'll, we'll show that in the video. So 
So we'll we'll turn it over to uh, Paul uh, for the video. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to share the uh, screen on my computer with you. And uh, we haven't done this too many times in the past, but in experimenting, the, again, the video will look much choppier than you will see if you go to the YouTube site. And so we will put that um, YouTube link up this afternoon on the archived uh, web page, which we've shared with you before. Um, and we, these uh, particular videos do not have sound with them. So uh, when we get going here and uh, share uh, what we've got, Steve, I believe, is going to just describe what is in the video. And so I'll, I'll go ahead and begin uh, sharing here. Okay, so I will, um, you can hit the full screen on your own computer, I believe, and I will expand this out to a larger size. What you're seeing is the, uh, actually the AgriBility channel on YouTube, and uh, the first videos that are posted below the featured video are the uh, adaptive gardening tools, and we will have a specific playlist for those. So I'll begin the first one. I'll maximize the screen from my end, but you can also hit the full screen on your end. And uh, again, uh, the quality on YouTube is actually much better than what you'll see, but at least I'll give you a chance to uh, get an idea of what's available here. And I need to just cut my sound first. Okay, you, uh, you're seeing me use a, uh, this is actually a potato fork, uh, short, short handle, uh, and now uh, a dirt shovel uh, with a longer handle. Uh, notice the, my back, how it, it, it's not bent as much. Uh, here is a long-handled rake with an extra handle, again, uh, to where I'm not bending over as much. This is a garden scoot uh, where you can sit on it and it's got larger uh, wheels. Uh, you'll notice I've had a little bit of difficulty rolling it. Uh, here's another uh, kind of a rocker seat. Uh, you can vary the, the height of it. Uh, I have trouble with it uh, because I have trouble getting up and down off of it. And it was on the highest level. Here's another uh, garden scoot, uh, a little lower. Uh, again, you're still bending over. Uh, getting up and down is, a dif is difficult. Uh, this is good for sitting. I had a lot of difficulty uh, with the kneeling part and especially getting back up. Uh, this is a five gallon bucket with a with a seat, which is actually one that uh, made for hunters uh, that we that I got at uh, Menards. And then our famous rototiller. Um, this is my rototiller, uh, and you can be able to see how it just beats me to death. Uh, vibration, um, really tough.
Okay, here again with the rototiller. Uh, you watch how it shakes my arms. Uh, I'm not holding it real tight uh, because you know it tear my arms off. And I believe that is it. Back to Paul. Okay, we thank you again for um, participating today. I believe that Cliff is putting the link up right now to the YouTube playlist. And uh, if you would like to go ahead and click on that link, it will take you directly to the playlist for those videos so that you can see them uh, in high definition. And we realize that the choppiness made some of them a little difficult to, to comprehend there, especially with the rototiller at the end because it was choppy anyway. So um, as we close, again, I will go back to uh, a resource slide that I will leave up. And you're welcome to uh, bookmark any of those pages that are listed on that uh, sheet. Again, we thank you for your participation. Thank you to Steve and Amber for their excellent uh, commentary today. And again, feel free to join us on our next webinar on lighting for agricultural settings. And have a good day.